Here's a picture from a lovely website, thispersondoesnotexist.com and some more of them. As the name of the website suggests, these are fake people generated by a computer. It's a random generator and it gives a different face each time you run it. Good thing these people don't exist because the glasses melting into the face on the right is a little bit disturbing. Anyway, it generates a random face every time you load the page. And in the language of this course, we'd say the face is a random variable. What's behind this sort of website is a probability modeling question. Given a data set x1 up to xn, can we design a probability model that might have generated it? In this case, given a data set of real images of faces, can we invent a good probability model that might generate those faces? And can we fit our model to the data set? This is called generative modeling for the obvious reason that it's about implementing a random variable generator. Let's state the overall approach more abstractly. I'll leave you to read. Quick quiz. Where does the magic formula in step two come from? Stop for a minute and think about it. This formula just says that the likelihood of the data set is the product of the likelihoods of the individual terms. In other words, that the data set consists of independent samples, exactly what we said in words that we'd assume in step one. And it says that each data point has a likelihood function PR subscript X. In other words, that each data point is sampled from a random distribution X. Again, what we wrote down in step one. So this idea of generative modeling is nothing new. It's the likelihood of what we called an IID sample, that is independent and identically distributed random variables. And we're using maximum likelihood estimation, the same fitting procedure we've been using all along. In fact, if you look back at the video on maximum likelihood estimation, you'll see that we've done plenty of generative modeling already. So I'm just going to go through one example in this video fitting a normal distribution. Pause and have a quick read. By the way, when this question says numerical data set, it just means that x1 up to xn are all floating point numbers. You should be able to do this yourself. Pause the video and see if you can work it out. This is perhaps the most important example in the entire course, so it really is worth trying to work it out yourself. Press play when you're ready. Here are the steps. First, I'll write out the probability model for a single observation in random variable notation. Next, look at the likelihood function for this random variable on Wikipedia if you like, or from memory is better. Next, write out the log likelihood of the entire data set. The likelihood is the product of the likelihoods of each individual xi, so the log likelihood is the sum. We should just note down here that we're assuming that the x1 up to xn are all independent. Now that's a standard assumption when we're doing generative modeling, but it wasn't stated explicitly in the question. It's a choice that we made as modelers, so we should include it in our answer and copying out the likelihood formula for an individual data point and tidying up, we end up with this. By the way, I often see students who copy out the formula they wrote out in step two. They copy it literally and they don't stick on the subscript here. Don't do that. You'll end up with some nonsense algebra and you'll just confuse yourself. Last, we want to fit the model, i.e. find maximum likelihood estimates. This is a two parameter problem, so we'll differentiate with respect to both of the parameters. Differentiate with respect to mu, set that derivative equal to zero. Differentiate with respect to sigma, set that derivative equal to zero. And it gives me these two equations. So I have two simultaneous equations, two unknowns, 
When I solve the equations together, I get the answer given here. OK, that's the procedure for fitting a generative model. In the printed notes, there's another worked example, and it's a good idea to go through that one to test your skill. Now, we dive straight into maths exercises in this video, and it's certainly good to be able to do the maths, but it's kind of missing the point of generative modelling. I want to step back and think about what it means to have a generative model for a data set. Here's a data set of numbers clustered around 0.7. Now, have a look at these two models for the data set. The blue line in the middle plot shows the probability density function of a normal distribution very close to the data points, just 0.2 units away on average. And the purple line in the bottom plot shows another normal distribution, this one with an average error of 0.6. So which of the two is a better model? I'd say the purple model is better. The purple model has a reasonable chance of producing all the points in the data set, while the blue model has almost zero chance of producing many of the data points because its likelihood is very close to zero. In quantitative terms, the purple model puts the log likelihood of the data set at minus 28.0, while the blue model puts it at minus 570.5. So this is what generative modeling is really about. It's about asking, can I find a model which could plausibly have produced my data set? Or if you like, you could say, can I find an explanation for my data set? And the big idea behind the tools for generative modeling is this. We can measure how plausible a model is by the likelihood that it gives to the data set. Now, I told you a white lie earlier. The faces on thispersondoesnotexist.com do indeed come from a probability model, but the model wasn't fitted using maximum likelihood estimation. It used a different method called generative adversarial network training. It's still trying to find parameters to make the likelihood of the data set high, but the probability model it uses is too complicated for us to even write down the likelihood function, and so we need cleverer tools for optimizing it. You'll find out more about this if you hang around for the master's course in probabilistic machine learning.